Hello everyone and welcome back to Gage Hill Crafts. I'm Sarah Scully and I have another installment in my series on hand dyeing using natural plant materials for you. Um, today I wanted to discuss lichen dyeing. Um, so lichens are uh, their own class of organism. Um, I'll say plant but I don't think they're technically a plant. I think they're their own thing. Um, and you are probably familiar with them even if you don't know that term. They're these sort of uh, spongy looking growths that can attach themselves to trees, rocks, any kind of solid surface. Um, and many varieties of lichen can be used to naturally dye. Now I want to go ahead and get a little um, public awareness statement out of uh, the way for you. And that's that some lichens are endangered and many are very slow growing. So in order to um, sustainably use lichens in hand dyeing, what you wanna do is only gather fallen lichens that have become detached from their host and those would be fair game to pick up and gather because um, they're just gonna die anyway and so you might as well use them to dye some wool. Um, but you don't want to scrape lichens off of rocks or scrape them off of trees. Um, especially with plants, you could obviously damage, damage the host plant. Um, but you could be removing an organism that only grows, you know, one millimeter a year or something like that. So, you know, a piece of lichen that's this big, um, depending on the species, you know, that could be several hundred years old. So you wouldn't want to just rip that out of its environment because it's not going to be able to replenish itself very quickly. Um, but you can see this is just a piece of tree bark that I found in the woods behind our house and it was laying there on the ground and so I felt free to pick it up because the wind had knocked this down. Um, I had been reading about lichens for over a year and, and how to dye with them and what species to use and there's, like I said, there's a lot of detail. Um, there's even some specialty books on this topic so I'll try to find a couple of those and link to them in the show notes. But what I thought I was going to be able to do was dye with something called staghorn lichen, which I believe grows in the woods behind our house. Um, I was under the impression that I had access to that, and it turns out I probably don't um, have the right species or subspecies of that to make, to make the dye um, in the way that I thought I could. So here's what happened. I did my reading, I gathered my lichen. Um, what you're supposed to do with some of these lichens is make a long-term fermenting bath using ammonia and um, you let those sit for a number of months and you stir them and you air them out every once in a while to give them some oxygen and you know a good six to eight months later you are supposed to have a concentrated dye that you can then use on protein fibers. Um, I tried all that, followed all the steps, and I got nothing. Um, the, the ammonia bath um, looked like it had sort of a cherry red color. It looked quite promising, but when I put the yarn into the dye bath and cooked it for a little while, it wasn't taking up any of that color, and I actually noticed that the dye bath itself had just kind of shifted colors. Like it, it, the, the bath clarified in a weird way that I've never seen before, so there was no, there was no pigment to attached to the yarn. Um, fortunately I had also gathered some other lichens that I didn't ferment um, in that same time frame. I had just dried them and so I also knew about a recipe for using dried or fresh lichens um, and that actually ended up working out. I made this um, yellow, this beautiful natural yellow, which of course is a very common color in nature and you don't even need lichens to get yellow. You can use all kinds of plants. Um, but here's how I got that shade. So I, I had read that lichens are self-mordanting. They have some compounds in there that help the pigments stick to the yarn. So you don't have to use alum or other mordants ahead of time. So what I did was I just put the dried lichens into a fresh dye pot and cooked them for about 30 minutes. And then I took the yarn that was the failed dye experiment from the ammonia bath rinsed that ammonia out and then put that yarn into the fresh dye pot. There's self-mordanting in that way. I wanted to make sure that I used up all of the chemical components in the lichen. So rather than straining a dye bath as I normally would have, I just left the yarn in there with the plant material. 
I cook that for about 40 minutes on a low simmer and then turn the heat off, let it sit overnight as I usually do with uh, most dye vats and then rinse the yarn in the morning. Now there was chunks of plant material that I had to get out but the yarn itself uh, washed out clear on the first rinse. So I feel like it's going to be very color fast. In other words, the dye really did adhere to the yarn. And so far it looks to be pretty light fast as well. I've left this particular skein out, um, not in direct sunlight, but in ambient light. And it hasn't showed any, any signs of blotching or fading. Um, so that's a simple way you can uh, do, you know, try out a lichen bath. Again, it's another yellow dye. Um, so, you know, whether it's, if you live in an urban area and you don't have access to fallen lichens, it may or may not be worth your time to go out and gather them. Um, but go ahead and investigate lichen dyeing on your own. There are other varieties, um, some that grow by the seaside that will give a dark fuchsia color. Um, and there are shades of green and rust and other shades that you can get from different species. So check out the lichen population uh, in your neighborhood, uh, for wherever you live in the world, and perhaps there are some dye-friendly lichens that you could use. Uh, of course, I'd be very curious to know if you do use lichen, if you have in the past, or if you've found some and you're going to give it a try. I would love to see your results. Um, and please share those in the comments uh, on the video or on the accompanying blog post. Thanks again for watching and tune in next time. Uh, the next episode, I will be talking about Queen Anne's Lace, um, which was another new one that I tried this summer. Thanks again. See you next time.